Si igual que yo te criaste con American Pie, no podés perderte esta entrevista de punta a punta. Hablé con Thomas Ian Nicholas, uno de los protagonistas de la película, y también hablé con Richard Crudo, el director de fotografía, sobre una producción de la que no se guardaron absolutamente nada, porque este año se cumplen 25 años del estreno de un clásico de la comedia adolescente. Mira. Uh, I mean, you know, this, the, the franchise, it, it opened a lot of the success of it, opened a lot of doors for me. Uh, and so I'm very, very grateful for that. Tone can be a very hard thing to capture, especially in a comedy. Um, everyone has to be on exactly the same page as far as the tone of the piece is concerned. Otherwise, it won't work. And this one, it works without a misstep anywhere. The infatuation. I love you. <laughs> okay. I read that they didn't have any faith on this movie. Is that correct? I wouldn't say they didn't have any faith, the executives at Universal. Um, I'd say that maybe the movie, because it was on the lower end of the budget spectrum, it might have gone a little bit under the radar, let's say. Okay. Um, they probably didn't have the highest of ex expectations for it, but nobody really looked down on it. I certainly didn't expect that it would become, you know, four movies as well as five spinoffs. I mean, there are at this point, there are nine American Pie films. Yeah. We, we've sort of, uh, you know, we're, we're slowly on our way to becoming the new National Lampoon, I guess. It's a comedy, obviously, and it's it concerns kids. And, and that is sort of a genre of its own. There's enough of those movies that have been around for so long that they're their own thing, their own little world. It's uh, I, I'm very fond of it, although I'm, I'm always a big fan of the very first film. Yeah. Uh, and I'm kind of that way with all franchises. You know, I'm always about the first film that comes out because... The sequels can be good, but they're never as good as the first one. Sounds like a lot of work. Here's to the next step. This bed is on fire with Universal Pictures presents. All the actors were terrific. Um, everybody was on the same page. Um, no one, there was no ego involved. No one was trying to outshine anyone or show anyone up. It was as if everyone was on the same team. And Sean, all of the actors were just terrific. Um, I, I think the success of the movie probably took them a little by surprise, but at the time we were making it, no one knew it was gonna be that much of a success. And um, we were just concentrating on doing the best we could in the moment. When you get comedic geniuses like, like you know, Sean William Scott, or the same thing happened to me when I was a kid working with Daniel Stern on Rookie of the Year. You know, when you're, when you're with someone that just has an innate, ability to be funny it is so impossible to not break character and just and and fall prey to what you know they're uh, achieving for the audiences um and you do that out of respect so that other people can't but man I, I, there's never been a time that i've worked with either one of those people as well as others that you know i haven't broken character when when you're working with someone that's just really, really good at comedy. As I say, all the actors were great. And Thomas Ian was just terrific. He was eager. He was on the ball. He knew what he wanted to do and how he wanted to say it. And it came out beautifully. I think it's um, it's one of the best performances he's ever turned in. You know, I just remember having a great time and and really enjoying my time there. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, but that's me on set. That's my favorite part of yeah. of my career is when I get to be on set and making the project, whether it's a film or television show. Perhaps you could help me with my studies? If you ever had a chance with Nadia, this is it. The thing that really, and you mentioned Crudo, I love that guy. Uh, and he's a great DP. Um, and so one of the things that I think makes the first film so enjoyable to me, especially as a comedy, is how Richard Crudo lit the movie. Because He was very much like uh, a one light, one job kind of DP and wasn't afraid of shadows. And so a lot of these teen comedies, they, they light them up. Like even American Pie 2, you know, no offense to Mark Irwin, but there was no shadows, which yeah. to me, when you're watching that uh, as, a, as an artist, I understand what that means. And I don't think that audiences do. They may not be aware of these things, but when there's no shadows, it makes it surreal And when there are shadows, it makes it realistic. So it American Pie One has a has a grounded nature to it because of the way that Richard Crudo lit the scenes. Then photographically, um, it's a comedy, and it's generally 
up key. You know, you can see what's happening. Um, wider lenses for the most part, uh, let things play, let the comedy play, see what's happening. Uh, I think we touched all those bases and we wanted it to just look clean and natural and faithful to the time that we shot it. There was no real desire to, to impart a heavy photographic effect or look. I, I think that would have taken away from the movie actually. A story about the moves. You bad boy. Do you remember how I was shooting that particular dance? It was very funny. I mean, there was so much. The script, I remember reading the script very clearly, and it was it made me laugh out loud on so many occasions that um, you say, maybe it's just me. I just think this is funny. But apparently everybody did. And you never know while you're shooting it. That's the thing. You know, what you respond to live in front of the camera and a few feet away from you can be very different when you see it on screen as part of the, the greater narrative. So there were a lot of very, very funny moments while we were shooting and they're in the movie and they're the ones that are funny in the movie were funny while we were shooting them. So watching Jason do his dance was, everybody gave him a lot of grief for it. It was very funny and it was in all in good nature and in good fun, but it was very funny. And um, the way he did it was funny. It was perfect. Exactly does third base feel like? Like warm apple pie. And what about the pie scene? That's an icon of the movie, and it's the thing that gave the movie its name. Well, there's two versions of that scene that there that you can still watch. There's the rated and the unrated version. I wasn't there that day. I remember shooting that scene on the set, and again, it was hysterically funny because you look at what he's doing, and then you look at yourself and everyone else. What are we? What are we doing? Uh, it was very funny. And I think a lot of that feeling got into the film itself. Um, we had a great time making it. The thing I remember about it is the script was different. In the original script, it was because he asks, um, and I think this is, I don't know that you'd have to talk to Adam Hur as the writer, but this is my mind and how it went. When, when uh, Jim asks Oz what third base feels like and or he asked Kevin and, and Kevin says, hey, you want to take this Oz? And Oz says, warm apple pie. When Jim got home, he sees the pie and he heated it up in the microwave. And so when he goes to like, you know, uh, do his business, he's like, it's piping hot. And he's like, ow, ow, ow. You know, because he's burning himself. And that was in the original script, which obviously that changed. It was very difficult for him, but he was a good sport. You know, yeah. he went for it. He went for it. He just said, you know what? I, I, I'm i going to go do it and just be as crazy <laughs> as, as it says. And that was really, the, I think, the only sane approach. If he held back in any way, it wouldn't have, you would have sensed it and it wouldn't have been nearly as funny. And I think a lot of that spirit infused itself, got into the, the emulsion in some way too. But that scene in particular was in a lifetime of doing this was the single craziest thing I've ever photographed. You have anything to drink? I believe the kegs are upstairs. That is what the Cretans drink. Stifler's mom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jennifer was great. I mean, another, the movie was so well cast. You know, everyone who was there was exactly the person they should have been for the role. And, and she filled that bill just terrifically. I mean, she had the look, she had the carriage and the attitude, and she could deliver the lines in, in the very convincing way. Um, and she was lo also lovely to deal with, friendly and, and personable. Except for his mom. Are you trying to seduce me? Yes, ma'am, I am. Oh, mom. I read about uh, you telling an anecdote between Eddie and Jennifer Coolidge. Uh, is it true that they live together? Like, <laughs> hey, they did for a short time, like right after the movie, they were roommates, platonic roommates. Uh, but, but I, why? I share, I, was it for the sake of the show? <laughs> no, no, just, just, I don't know how they ended up. I mean, obviously, you'd have to ask Eddie K. Thomas or Jennifer Coolidge about that. I just know that at one point we were doing press interviews and Eddie talked about it and, and Jennifer did. And they told this story about how they loved when they got food deliveries because <laughs> like a pizza would come to the door 
or you know, or whatever, and they'd knock on the door and they'd open the door and they would both be there, and the person would just be like, "What?" Because <laughs> you know, it's Finch and Stifler's mom. You're not gonna do anything about that. What am I gonna do? Broadcast her over the internet? Yeah, that guy's in my trick class. Oh no. We had to very carefully plan what was going to be seen on the monitors on the on the computer screens, and shoot that footage separately, and then the live action that was shot with the computer in the scenes and that the actors were reacting to needed to sync up in, in terms of the drama or the comedy needed to sync up in, in the way, uh, according to the script. So we had to be very carefully planned out in that section, those sections where you see that sort of material and we'd shoot the material that you would see on the screen first and then later we would get to the scenes where you would see it on the computer screen itself. So everything was pretty much planned out to a very far extent. Otherwise, the comedy wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have been able yeah. to cut well. But did you use an actual webcam to shoot that scene? Or like is that like the magic of post production? As I recall, we shot it on we shot everything on film and then transferred it to a digital format that could then be placed on the screen. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Houston, we have a problem. For instance, I'm thinking of the webcam scene that's like impossible to think of something like that today, but do you think the movie is like yes. updatable in a way? People ask me that question a lot and uh, I do think it's updatable, uh, but on the flip side, you know, the girls in that film are every bit as powerful as the, the guys. Um, they hold a lot of power and they have their own minds and their own thoughts about how things should go between them. And I don't think it's at all condescending to the women. I want the right time, the right moment, the right place. It's not a space shuttle launch, it's sex. I mean, there, there are plenty of films that get made that, you know, are, are maybe pushing the envelope. And I think we were still pushing the envelope even back then. Um, I mean, it, certainly if you made it today, it, it, it couldn't be the exact same thing because times are different. The, the humor is different. You know, today you probably have to make some adjustments just to make it contemporary. But I don't think if you tried to make the film today, I don't think it would be that terribly. It might be controversial for the opposite reason, because it actually does give respect and some decency to to both sexes and, and respects them all as human beings. Look at the expression on her face. She's kind of looking right into your eyes, saying, a big boy. Oh, my God. Oh. American Pie. Everyone, I think, can relate to this film, especially because everyone has been that age and everyone has been in high school and everyone has had that period of, of uncertainty. And, you know, you're going to leave high school now and go into another life. And you've had your friends and acquaintances and you're curious about the opposite sex. And there's that awkwardness that kids have and confusion and everything. And it's all there. And that never goes out of style. The same things biologically will be taking place. And um, I think it's a timeless theme. And th this one just really seemed to click on so many levels that um, it, I think it'll be with us forever. This film, I think, is in a class of its own. Uh, it's intelligent. And its comedy is very identifiable to people of all parts of society. It has a heart. It has a lot more going for it than just cheap jokes, you know, and, and sex and, and things that are, are easy things for filmmakers to, to put out and, and attract the public. This movie has some heart and it's got some intelligence to it. And I think that's what sets it apart.